Good afternoon, and thanks for having us in. A Pine Ridge man charged with a 2021 murder has reached a plea deal with prosecutors. 48-year-old Vine Hayes plans to plead guilty to assault resulting in serious bodily injury. According to a signed statement, Hayes and two other men beat Robert Jumping Eagle to death. Under the plea deal, Hayes will face a maximum of 10 years in federal prison. Authorities are investigating a crash that left one person dead in Walworth County. Reports say a semi hauling a load of cattle, trailer, and, Ford, and a Ford truck were heading in opposite directions on U.S. Highway 83 yesterday afternoon. The vehicle collided head-on. The Ford went into the ditch while the semi rolled onto the driver's side before coming to a stop. The driver of the Ford, a 56-year-old man, died at the scene. The driver of the semi was not hurt. Turning now to our first look at your midday forecast with meteorologist Megan Chatta. Megan, we're looking for some very pleasant temperatures as we head into the weekend. Yes, we are, Perry, and those temperatures are going to be at or above normal. Right now, some clouds moving through the area and 53 degrees here in Sioux Falls, a north wind at 9 miles an hour. As we head around the region, cloudy skies in here on at 45, north winds at 13. 52 right now in Yankton, 47 in Brookings, 39 in Sisseton, 42 in Buffalo, and 49 degrees in Custer. We do have this north wind right now at 5 to 15 miles an hour. And our winds are going to stay light as we go through the rest of your afternoon and into tonight. There is a look at our thicker cloud cover. Northeastern Kelloland getting a break from the clouds right now. And under those clouds, we could see a few light rain showers or just a few sprinkles possible. Taking a closer look right there between Eagle Butte and Pier, up by Mobridge and Gettysburg as well. And down towards South Central, Kelloland, Parkston, Lake Andes, Wagner, all could see a few light sprinkles as we head through the rest of your afternoon. So for today, partly cloudy skies, that light north breeze, 54 in Sioux Falls, 42 in Aberdeen, 50 in Pier, mostly cloudy, and 55 in Rapid City. Then for tonight, we'll have a few more clouds. The winds stay light, 30 in Sioux Falls, 26 in Aberdeen, 29 in Pier, and 33 in Rapid City. For your Saturday, some sunshine coming, a light southwest breeze now. Temperatures will warm just slightly above normal. 57 in Sioux Falls, 54 in Aberdeen, 57 in Pier, and 60 in Rapid City. Then on Sunday, we do have a few more clouds, but our temperatures are going to stay above normal in the mid 50s to the low 60s, even trying to reach the upper 60s in western South Dakota. And then we have a chance of a few light rain showers coming late Sunday into Tuesday. We'll take a look at those in just a little bit. All right, thank you very much, Megan. Well, Emily's Hope announced a $30,000 grant to expand their substance use prevention curriculum. Emily's Hope is a nonprofit organization dedicated to removing the stigma of substance use disorder and providing financial assistance for treatment. Emily's Hope has recently received a generous three-year grant from the South Dakota Community Foundation. This grant is intended to expand the reach of the nonprofit's K-5 through substance use prevention curriculum to more schools across the state of South Dakota. The National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum revealed the North Dakota State versus South Dakota State Dakota marker football rivalry bobblehead. The bobblehead commemorates the longtime football rivalry, which has been called the Dakota Marker Series since 2004. Each bobblehead costs $50. SDSU versus NDSU is the 17th oldest rivalry in NCAA Division I college football. NDSU leads the all-time series, but SDSU has won the last four matchups. The game kicks off tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central Time. The 100-day countdown to Super Bowl 58 has officially begun. Michael George reports from New York's Times Square, where the special kickoff today with lots of fanfare. Paramount Mountaineers, carrying all 32 NFL team's flags, converged on Times Square Friday morning to mark the 100-day countdown to the Super Bowl. CBS's Nate Burleson was the master of ceremonies. Really is something special, right? I mean, there's not too many events in the world where whether you're a sports fan or not, everybody's going to sit down. It's the pageantry. It's also the players, the storylines behind the players. 
the commercials. So it's, it's a little something for everybody. Paramount and CBS Sports are promising a mountain of fun as they prepare for the most watched television event in the country. Let's talk about the energy here. We're 100 days out, but people yeah. are already pretty hyped. It really is. We're 100 days from Super Bowl 58 in Vegas. CBS, we can't wait. And really, the story starts to unfold right now. Fans we spoke to know what they want to see. A competitive game. A competitive game going down to the wire. I'm saying I want to see long, long throws from the QBs, and I want to see touchdowns, baby, touchdowns. The big game is on February 11th on CBS and for the first time ever on a kid-friendly broadcast on Nickelodeon. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now this will be the first time ever that Las Vegas is hosting the Super Bowl. And there's already lots of buzz about the halftime show featuring Usher. Eric Trump has testified that he rely, relying, was relying on accountants to ensure the accuracy of financial statements that authorities say fraudulently exaggerated his father's, Donald Trump's wealth and assets to deceive banks and insurers. Eric Trump took the witness stand for a second day today in the civil case brought by New York's attorney general. Eric Trump was pressed about what steps he took to verify information before signing documents certifying to lender Deutsche Bank that his father's financial statements were correct. Eric Trump insisted he would never sign something that was inaccurate. The House Republicans passed. passed an emergency funding bill for Israel, providing $14 billion in aid. But it faces opposition from the White House and Senate leaders, who also wanted aid to Ukraine in the bill. The White House is asking for $14 billion in emergency funding for Israel, $61 billion for Ukraine, and $9 billion for humanitarian assistance.